This is Walter O'Keefe inviting you to listen in on the Nightline. Tonight, live the incredible life of ages yet to come in a time that might be a million years from now on X-1. Now, an incredible story of the world beyond. Countdown for blastoff. X-5, 4, 3, 2, X-1, fire. From the far horizons of the unknown come tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future, adventures in which you'll live in a million could be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, presents X minus one. Tonight, The Haunted Corpse by Frederick Pohl. But first, hear this. Whenever you want things to be just right, be it here or there or day or night. You make it Pabst, cause Pabst makes it perfect. Yes, Pabst makes it perfect. Just as we always have ever since 1844. So next time, you make it Pabst because Pabst makes it perfect. America's Blue Ribbon Beer from the Pabst Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Yes, Pabst makes it perfect. Now, X-1 and the story of The Haunted Corpse. We moved in at 0800. That's pretty good time, considering that Van Pelt turned up at the Pentagon on Thursday, and it took him till Monday morning to go in and see the general. By Tuesday, I had a task force of 135 men bivouacked around the old man's place. Corporal McCabe, my orderly, reported mission accomplished. Well, Colonel, there's a whole company dug in down the road right yonder, and Wins is all set up right here like you done ordered. We got a covey of them recon cars from the cavalry roaming like the passel of June bugs quartering a handkerchief. McCabe isn't very bright, but he's loyal. Well, about nine in the morning, the old man woke up. I suppose the firing at the auxiliary pistol range I set up got him out of bed. Get out of here. Go on, you. Get those trucks off my lawn. Get out. Dr. Horn. Oh, what is this? The Boy Scout Jamboree? Are you the scoutmaster? Dr. Horn, I am Lieutenant Colonel Windermere, sir. My orders are to establish a security cordon about your laboratory. A what? Here you are, sir, my copy of your orders. What the devil is this nonsense? You will see they are signed by General Follinsby himself. I know, I know, that sniveling rat Van Pelt. He went to the army, is that it? That mountainous, ungrateful tub of rancid lard went crawling into Washington and ratted to some tin soldier. Sir, General Follinsby is not a tin soldier. Is that it? Did Dick Van Pelt come to you with some cock and bull story? The chicken-livered, worm-eaten, misbegotten offspring Dr. of a... Dr. Horn, t- the general asked me to give you his personal assurance that we will not interfere in your work here. But I'm sure you understand the importance of security. Now, you listen to me. The Horn effect is my personal property, not the government's or the army's. What is this, creeping socialism? Sir, security. My orderly isn't cleared. Oh, that don't make no never mind, Colonel. I don't rightly grasp what he's saying no how. McCabe, report to my tent. Oh, just when it's getting interesting. <clears throat> now, Dr. Horn. I want you to know that I'm here to help you. If there's anything you want, just ask me. If you want to go into town, that can be arranged. Of course, you'd better give us 24-hour notice so we can clear the streets and check out all the... Young man? Yes, sir. You may go to the devil. Of course, he went in to call the Pentagon and protest. He had a lot of spirit for an old civilian of about 75. Hello? Hello? 
This is Dr. Eric Horn. I want to protest an invasion of my privacy. Of course, Dr. Horn, I understand. There's an officious young Cub Scout out at my place making a pet of himself. A lieutenant something. Lieutenant Colonel Windermere. But I called Washington. Yes, sir, but our intercept monitor put the call through to me. We'll take care of any outside calls you wish to make. Of all the insufferable... Ah. At about 0600 the next morning, I ran a surprise full-scale inspection and simulated infiltration. Hey, look there! You trigger-happy idiots! It's me, McCabe! And you simulated! You hear? Fortunately, he was only grazed. The wire-stringing detail worked all night, and we had surrounded the old Victorian house with triple-strand electrified barbed wire with guard towers every 50 feet. At 1400, I paid a call on Dr. Horn. What are you doing here? Good afternoon, Dr. Horn. I came in for your report. My what? Your daily progress report. It's in my orders. Paragraph 8. Just carry on, sir. Corporal McCabe will take your words down. Oh, his uh, clearance came through last night. You have a method for electronically killing a man without touching him. Killing, Lieutenant? Will you tell me what in the sweet name of heaven did I say that gave you that particularly stupid notion? But I understand. You think this is a weapon. Of course, sir. Of course. My machine renders humans into corpses. A chipped flint will also do that. Look, you simple... Don't you realize what my machine can do? It can separate that something which, added to a body, produces a man. A subtracted leaves a corpse. I can separate the two things without destroying them. You understand that I can take the ghost of life out of a body and keep it unharmed. Try to understand that, you pig-headed, mule-eared, rabbit-faced... You're listening to The Haunted Corpse, tonight's attraction on X-1. You know, the property value of your home depends on the well-being of your community and your neighborhood. On things like good lighting for your streets, accessible parks and playgrounds, and cleaning up slums. And what others are doing, you can do. In Michigan, a city group launched Operation Bootstrap to rehabilitate houses, clean up slums, and interest everyone in better living standards. In Pennsylvania, a local real estate board surveyed every property in town got 500 improved and 50 hopeless slums torn down. So help clean up slums and keep up your own home as well. To help keep your community sound, get into Action. Action is a national organization designed to help you protect the well-being of your community. For free information on your particular problem, write to Action. Box 20, Radio City Station, New York 20, New York. Now, back to X-1 and the haunted corpse. I terminated the interview and went back to headquarters to prepare my situation analysis. Van Pelt, all 300 pounds of him, was waiting for me. He was eating a can of sea ration with a knife. He's a perfectly sane colonel, but he's dangerous. Very dangerous. You've got to protect me absolutely. Van Pelt, I want the straight dope on horn. Now, what is this ghost business? Oh, that, that... (laughs) That's just his way of putting it. You see, uh, who uh, care to join me in a can of beans? No, thank you. Well, uh, there's a difference between a living man and a dead man, and that difference is what Dr. Horn uh, whimsically calls a ghost. Uh, Call it life plus intelligence plus soul, if there is such a word in your lexicon, Colonel. You mean his machine uh, conjures up ghosts? No, 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 Colonel, uh... Dr. Horn is an impossible old vulture, but he's not a faker. Horn can drain the essence of life from a body and store it, or if he wishes, he can replace them in another body. Uh, would you mind handing me the can opener? Uh, This looks interesting. Macaroni and beef. Supper ration. Well... So he had a machine that could take a mind out of one body and put it in another body. Well, why didn't he say so straightforwardly instead of beating around the bush like a civilian? 
course, he was a civilian, which might explain it. Next morning, I went to the laboratory with Corporal McCabe and insisted on a demonstration. All right, this way, gentlemen. Please, Corporal McCabe is an enlisted man. At this pole, we have a Cocker Spaniel. And over here, a Rhode Island Red. That's a right perky-looking chicken, Doc. If you will kindly stay clear of the terminal areas, I will activate the field. What's happening? The field is vibrating at the cycloid rate set on the crystals. All right, it's ready for discharge. Now. Well? Watch. Here, Rover. Here, boy. Here, boy. Hey, that ain't no hand. That's the chicken. I know. Here, Rover. <laughs> well, well, I'll be pickled for an eel. That little old chicken is trying to wag its tail. And over here... Here, chick, 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 chick. Well, doggone, I never did see the like of that. A flop-eared, honest-to-peat dog trying to peck corn. I had a private conference with the old man later. Under Section K of my security regulations, I moved on my own initiative. Well, Lieutenant? Lieutenant Colonel, there is a... Slight difference. Well? Now, can you do this with people? Indeed, I can. But the silly laws covering these things, they won't let me. I've tried. Imagine a simple exchange. A man dying of terminal cancer and a feeble-minded youth. Put the sound mind into the sound body and let the decayed parts rot together. But will they let me? No, no. You've never tried the machine on people? No. But you're here. A military man, hmm? Very brave... All I need is a volunteer. That coward Van Pelt refused. That's why he sneaked off to you. But a brave soldier like you... Negative, sir. Negative. But lieutenant... Negative, sir. And besides, I am not a lieutenant. I'm a field-grade officer. I don't believe you appreciate the investment the service has made in my training. However, you need volunteers. The Army has a way of obtaining volunteers, sir. We'll see what we can do. Actually, it was easy. First, there was a boy from Maine awaiting court-martial on an AWOL charge. Second, he volunteered when I pointed out he could get up to a year at hard labor. And then McCabe. Oh, no, Colonel, sir. I ain't to volunteer in time. <laughs> well, McCabe, I have been asked to recommend a non-com for infantry assignment in the Aleutian Islands. Infantry? Yes, Advance, rifle, platoon, scout. The, 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 the Aleutians? Mm, in the winter. Uh, Colonel, sir, I beg to report you have found a volunteer, namely I. Dr. Horn had arranged the terminus of the machine poles to be tapped into metal helmets which were adjusted on the heads of the two men. This here reminds me of playing left tackle. Ready, Lieutenant? I, uh, ready. But, Colonel, sir, maybe, maybe I better not try this. Well, I mean, I cancel my GI insurance. The illusions? I... Yes, sir, Colonel, sir. Well, goodbye. The test was an anticlimax. It worked. McCabe, that is, McCabe's body, reported himself as Private Ethan Coffin in a broad, down-east dialect. I had Horn switch them back, and then I went back to my tent and put through a call. Crash priority. General Fallen's be on a scrambler circuit, Colonel, sir. All right. Now leave, McCabe. This is top secret. They don't never tell me nothing. I swear it's worse than grade school. Now, General... Colonel! Uh, what, uh, Van Pelt, what's the idea of barging in? I'm making a top secret You call. didn't let Horn make his test. You didn't... Now, out, Van Pelt, out. But that's all he's been waiting for. You've got to listen McCabe, to me. McCabe, uh, Colonel... Escort Mr. Van Pelt out. <sighs> I was floating on a cloud of pure joy. I could see my eagles within my grasp. Maybe even a full star. I told the general my plan. Uh, are you still there, sir? Oh, well. You see, we use the device for intelligence. 
Suppose someone way up top in their government should visit the United States. We switch him. Put our own man in his body, you see? Or in wartime, take a few prisoners and put our men inside their bodies. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I can be available for a staff meeting at 0900. Yes, sir. <laughs> General Windermere. Lieutenant General Windermere. <laughs> oh, why not? General of the armies. Colonel, Wh- sir. Oh. What is it, McCabe? Uh, that Mr. Van Pale. Listen, McCabe, next time I'm on the top secret scrambler to the Pentagon, don't you dare let anybody into the command tent. Uh, no, sir, Colonel, sir. But this here Van Pale. I don't want to hear about him. Now let him cool his heels a while. Well, he ain't. That is, he left. Good. But but he carried on something frightful. He kept saying Mr. Horn wanted to live forever. What? Screw he ain't it. That's what he said. He said all Horn was waiting on was to make a test on human beings. He said that he's going to grab the first man he runs into and steal his body. I think he is drunk or something. McCabe, call a condition red alert. What for? Don't argue. Oh, never mind. You go up to the laboratory and take Dr. Horn into custody. I'll give the alert. Now move. I could see it all immediately. I grabbed my sidearm and buckled it on. And I threw the switch that signaled a red alert throughout the unit. Just what you'd expect from a selfish civilian like Horn. He'd take an invention like this and use it to steal other people's bodies to prolong his own nearly senile existence in a younger body. And if that happened, there goes my general star. Because he'd surely smash the machine and we'd never be able to trace him or switch him back and we wouldn't know which body he stole. I was held up at the inner perimeter for five precious minutes while some idiot insisted on a password. I just happened to forget it, although I had issued it in the morning. Luckily, while I was swearing at him, I accidentally hit the right combination and let me through. Van Pelt had gone into the laboratory. I knew that. Probably to try to stop the old man. But the effect would be to supply him with a body. He'd have to swap immediately. He couldn't take the chance of a heart attack. I ran into the laboratory, my sidearm drawn. Horn! Dr. Horn! Uh. Tripped over a human body. Still warm. Dr. Horn. His cast-off cocoon. Abandoned. And then in front of me, I saw him. Van Pelt! Too late! Too late! Now, wait. Listen. Oh, McCabe, what happened to you? He slugged you, did he? Too late! Now, wait. Don't smash the machine. Van Pelt, I know it's really you, Dr. Horn, and Van Pelt's body. Now, put down that gun. I'll smash it! Smash it! Stop don't wreck the machine. Listen, Dr. Horn, I'll help you. I'll see you get a good, healthy body as long as you want it. Dr. Horn, think of the safety of our country. Think of security. No, 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 I'm not Dr. Uh, who, who shot that? McCabe, put that pistol away, you fool! Oh, Horn. Dr. Horn, speak to me. Now, I know it's you and Van Pelt's body. Now, now speak to me, Dr. Horn. Oh, he's dead. McCabe, you simple-minded... Why did you kill him? Oh, everything is gone, my general star, everything. All right, McCabe, report to your quarters. You'll get a court-martial that'll make your hair curl. I sat there in the wrecked laboratory, and I almost cried. Everything gone, the machine, the brilliant mind that knew its secret. I looked at the corpse of Van Pelt that held the mind of Dr. Horn before that idiot McCabe had put a bullet through the brain and killed both. I could almost feel cheerful as I thought of the court-martial to come. It was at that moment that Sergeant O'Hare came in to tell me that McCabe wanted me on the telephone. I picked it up and waited to hear the miserable rat crawl and plead for mercy. Colonel, sir, this here is Corporal McCabe. McCabe, there is no use pleading for mercy. I trust you have managed to find your quarters. You're under arrest. That's what I thought. I don't think I'll stay for the court-martial, Lieutenant. They bore me. McCabe, but... But but the voice. Dr. Horn! Precisely, Lieutenant, precisely. (laughs) Goodbye now. If a body meet a body coming through the... (laughs) Goodbye, Lieutenant. Thanks for the body.
Fred Collins again, and I'll have another word about X-1 in a moment. Have you ever asked yourself what this country's most important natural resource is? I'm Dorothy Olson, NBC Bandstand singing school teacher. Our most important resource? Well, you might consider it our mineral deposits, or our tremendous sources of water power, or maybe our just our great forests. Well, these are all very important natural resources, but there's one resource that's more important than all these combined, our children. Don't neglect them or their educational facilities. Poor schools breed inadequate citizens for tomorrow. And another thing, keep your youngsters in tip-top shape so that they won't miss important school days. Dress them against the weather so they won't catch needless winter colds. Check their wardrobe as they go back to school this fall to be sure that they have plenty of the right kind of clothing. Remember, our children are this nation's most important natural resource. It's your job to protect their future as they go back to school this fall. You have just heard X-1, presented by the National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine. Your announcer, Fred Collins. X-1 was an NBC Radio Network production. There's excitement in the air at night, and Nightline brings it to you. Hear Nightline with Walter O'Keefe next on most of these NBC stations.